Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Chris Brown, and I'm the host for this exciting journey. Over the course of this series, we will be sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada. We will learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. We believe that the best way to understand a community is to talk to people who live and work there. That is why we are honored to have today's guest. She is the current mayor for the town of Bonneville in the province of Alberta. Please welcome Mayor Elisa Barrasso. Lisa, Elisa, sorry, I'm going to, I will get it right. Welcome to the show. No worries. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I'm really excited to uh, to do today's interview with you. Well, I, I'm excited as well. So if you've listened to the show before, you know what the first question out of my mouth is going to be. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Well, it's it's really an interesting uh, story, I think. It, it was never, I never had a sense, and I'm doing air quotes, um, <laughs> to... Uh, of a duty to, you know, work for my community. Uh, my story is that um, at the time I was on maternity leave, I have three kids, and I was serving on one board, uh, Community Futures Lakeland, and that's where I, I learned the skill of participating on a board, of being there when you're making a decision, and I actually, I really enjoyed it. And so then I, I started hearing that our local election was coming up and I thought, hey, I'm going to go sit in a council meeting and see what this is all about. And I, I saw the same type of dynamic where you're you're with a board, you're with a group of people, you're there to make decisions that Im can have an impact at a, a local level. And uh, so that's kind of where it started with me. But I also will say, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was on maternity leave. So I was also looking for a job that worked well for my family. Council meetings are in the evenings. My husband is home in the evenings. I didn't need to worry about child care. So it also fit really well with my family. And uh, really, my story just evolved from there. So was politics ever in the card for you? Was it discussed at the dinner table growing up? Or is it just like you said, just in that last statement there, you were bored on maternity leave. So you thought, let's let's uh, let's get involved somehow. And there's a local election. So let's let's run. Yeah, no, it, it never was a discussion around our supper table growing up. My family, my my parents, I will say, were never really implicated. However, my grandmother, she always, I remember when I was young, she served on many provincial boards. And I remember her, you know, going to these big meetings. She was integral in getting um, our, we have a local dog center that meets the needs of those with uh, disabilities. And she was integral in getting that um started here in the town of Bonneville. So as far as I can remember, she was always implicated in boards. My great grandfather, he served on council here. So I guess it is a little bit in my uh, DNA. And uh, but it was never really something that I had considered or talked about. And yeah. So in 20 and I want to make sure I get this right here, because I tried to do the election uh, research on people before I get them on the show. And the only time that I can see is in 2017 when you first put your name forward for elections in the town of Bonneville. Is that correct? As counselor? That's, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So as someone who is, I, I want to say has a pulse of their community because you were on the board of FCS uh, Lakeland, which I did not realize to begin with Lakeland FCS goes all the way out there unless there's two of them, because I used to live in Lloydminster and I know Lakeland starts, if I'm not mistaken, down there or a little bit north of it. Mm -hmm. um, were there issues that were coming up at the doorsteps when you were out canvassing, when you were out door knocking, asking people to count like vote for you were there issues that were coming up that you were surprised at being so in touch with your community being on that board oh gosh I'm thinking back um I guess nothing really jumped out at was me. there a pressing um, issue at the time well when I ran uh back in 2017 um at that time See, the town of Bonneville is very much centered around the oil and gas industry, and um, anybody in, in Bonneville really knows that we service the oil and gas, and therefore, 
our industry, um, our town moves along with the boom and bust with the oil industry. And so at that time, we were kind of coming out of a little bit of a recession. Uh, there was not a street that you could would drive down where there wasn't two or three houses up for sale. You know, the, the job market just wasn't really good. Um, we were losing a lot of people out of the municipality. So that was the one of the biggest issues at the time that was common. Um, you know, so then you're seeing a lot of retail store close, uh, you know, um, so it just, it was, it was a really hard time for everybody. Um, I think what most came out of it, you know, hearing from residents, I, I don't remember that it, there was anything in particular. I think it was more of a learning curve for me to, to open my, to, you know, it opened my eyes to realize that I'm not the only perspective in the town of Bonneville. I'm a stay-at-home mom and my husband works in the oil industry, but we have seniors, we have youth. And uh, so I guess it just opened my eyes to to want to learn more about um, the different, you know, residents in the town of Bonneville. We're going to talk about different perspectives a little bit later, but I want to stick on that first election because I like asking this question because I remember it for myself. I remember walking into the ballot box the very first time seeing my mm. name on that ballot and going, what have I done? I've now put myself so far out there that people are now publicly judging me if I'm a good candidate or not. For you, when you walked into that ballot box and saw, saw your name, what was what was that experience like? Yeah, well, it's it's exactly like that. You know, uh, you, you see the name there and, and that day, you know, on the election day when you go in and you see your name on that box and or on that ballot, uh, it's it's exciting. Uh, you know, n naturally, I was nervous because you just don't know what the outcome is. And you're getting, you know, positive comments from your friends and your family. But I mean, uh, they're not, you know, they, they are cheerleaders. They're, they're there to cheer you on. Yeah, exactly. So uh, definitely the unknown is definitely stressful. Uh, so it's definitely a day of mixed emotions. It's excitement, but it's also very stressful. So that night, though, you the blue check mark as the traditional ways that we do it on TV gets put beside your name. You are now the councillor elect for the town of Bonneville. I'm assuming there is some happy cheers. When does the happiness turn to, okay, the work now starts, the real work starts, the decisions that I'm about to make in that council room are going to affect me, my family, my neighbors, the community that surrounds me. Is there a honeymoon period or does the work start right away for you? Oh my gosh, the work starts <laughs> right away. <laughs> um, well, interesting Interestingly enough, uh, elections happen right during uh, budget time for a municipality. So you you are right in it, you, you know. And so I think it really hit home for me, my very first council meeting. You know, I was excited. I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm, I'm getting into. It's just like, we're just making decisions. And But then you actually get in that room with all your other fellow counselors. And uh, I think that's when it really hit me. And I got, I was super nervous my first meeting. Uh, yeah. And a budget binder that's about 10 inches thick saying, okay, right? read through it now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So luckily, though, you know, I had on um, I was coming into a council who had been working together with each other for, you know, almost 20 years. And they were so welcoming. And they were really wanting me, you know, to teach me and they were open to questions. So that in that regard, it made it a, a little bit easier. Was it were you the only new counselor to be elected in that election? If you don't mind me asking? Do you remember? No, there were three of us. Okay. Um, two of us were were like totally green, totally brand new. Um, and then the third, and who is on council with me once again, he was our regional fire chief. So he had already been implicated in a lot of the politics that had been going on in the region for quite some time. So, And correct me if I'm wrong, but the town of Bonneville elects their councillors at an at-large basis, right? They're not districts like some cities and even the city of Spruce Grove. They're all at-large, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That question comes in handy for a question later on in yeah. the interview. Um, yeah. 
I want to know because you 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 get into the elected politics and you are now someone who is making decisions. When it comes to you and in your role as councillor and now as mayor, how important is it for yourself to always be prepared when going into the meetings, but always going into those meetings with open minds because the decisions you make and the ideas that you believe that are needed may get swayed by fellow councillors, by public uh, uh, hearings. How important is it to be prepared, but not cement it in the idea of what you want is going to be what is voted on? Yeah, I think that is a an, a very key aspect of this job of do having both of those uh, elements as a councillor or mayor. You know, come prepared. Um, you know, re read your package, read the material, maybe do some of the homework if you need to. You know, if we're talking if they're talking about a certain street, maybe go for a drive and take a look at it. Um, so I, I'm a big proponent of coming prepared as far as knowing the material and, and doing your reading up front. But you're right, I think, um, I really do think you need to have an open mind. You can you can think that this is how I'm gonna vote and this and nobody will change my mind, but um, I think you need to be open to hearing other people and hearing those other perspectives around the table and what other counselors have to say. And I think you need to be open that, yeah, you might be swayed and that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I mean, I think we're all sitting around that table. Well, you should be um, to want to learn more about your community and those residents. So those counselors should be sitting around the table, bringing forward, you know, what they see in the community. And I should be open to being, you know, to seeing that and to hearing more about it. So, uh, and uh, I think that's just a good counselor. If you're able to sway somebody's opinion, you know, to vote maybe a different way, then you're doing how, a good job. How important is it for the mayor, though, to do that as well? Because you are the you are the chair of the meeting. You are the leader of council, yeah. not leader in the sense that you like dictate what goes on and what, what doesn't. But you're the one yeah. who is leading that council to get a consensus and move forward. How important is it for that mayor's role and particularly for yourself to ensure that all opinions are heard, but at the same time, understand that. We can't sit on an issue for six weeks because nothing's going to get done. So we have to call the vote from time to time. And sometimes you're going to have to make a tough decision if you're not ready for it. Yeah, uh, well, that that's just it. Um, as a mayor, you have to have, I believe, certain qualities as a leader that can uh, run a meeting to be able to come to a decision. Um I, you know, I respect the democratic process as far as, you know, majority, majority vote, you know, wins. Um, so even if it doesn't go in the direction where I think I will still represent the direction that council as a whole has decided and I will speak with that voice. Um, I will support council's decision, but um, as a mayor, you have to have certain, I believe, qualities as a leader to move those decisions forward what to qualities? ensure that everybody Sorry, but does. What qualities are you talking about? Well, um, I, I love this conversation because you seem so personable and I can imagine who I'm talking to here is the exact same person who sits at the council table in the mayor's chair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, and that's, so as a leader, I'm thinking of ensuring that, Everybody has an opportunity to have their say, you know, understanding those sitting around me. I, I try to get to know what their strengths are and, you know, maybe their weaknesses um, so that, you, you know, uh, if, if somebody is a, li a little bit on the quieter side, maybe I'll give them an opportunity to think about it. Maybe I'll lean on them a little bit. And I think those are the qualities of a leader that are important, but also, I have no problem if we need to make a decision or if we're going in the wrong direction to say, hey, hey, hey no, 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 this is what we're discussing or, you know, keep the focus here. This is not what we're discussing, but to do it in a, in a respectful, uh, a respectful way. Um, I think those are two big qualities um, that a leader needs to have. How much you, you mentioned the word respect, and I love hearing that from local elected leaders, especially at the council level. How much 
does respect play into municipal politics, particularly at that council table? Because there are some days I'm assuming you are not 100% in agreement with every single person on council. How much respect does come into play when it comes to addressing issues, but doing it in a respectful manner? Oh my gosh, it's everything. <laughs> it's everything. <laughs> uh, but there, you know, there's I, times that temperatures do get hot, but I'm assuming you oh yeah. have to learn about that respect aspect as well. Yeah, and I think a lot of the respect too comes, okay, not, not, not only within the meeting to have respect for one another as far as, you know what, that person has the floor, they're allowed to have their opinion, they're allowed to say what they want to say, and I, I will respect that they get that time. And then vice versa, they should respect me. But also when we come out of the meeting, I think that's the biggest, uh, th that's that's the time when the respect comes in. Uh, we live in a small municipality. It is easy for me to run into one of my counselors at the grocery store, at the local rec center. Uh, if we can't, you know, at least treat each other in a respectful way outside of the council chamber, um, I think that's a problem. So that's why I think respect is, is up there it's really key as an elected official to at least respect one another okay you, you, you're going down a path that i want to play in a little bit here for a second and okay. i want to know about that balance because you are the mayor of your community you are not in edmonton you are not in ottawa when you're elected you are in your community 24 7 you go to the grocery store you're mayor you go to a kid's mm -hmm. uh event you're the mayor have you found that public, personal, private balance yet where you can be mom to your three kids if you're at an event or you can be mayor at the event as well? I think so. I think I've found that balance. Um, Is it hard? Know, Is it hard to find the balance, though? Because I can imagine people like yourself oh. who want to engage with the people who ask or asking questions, but at the same time, you want to say, I have my kids today, guys. He, call me tomorrow. Is that hard? It's not hard for me. No. <laughs> um, I love an honest politician. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, for the most part, people are respectful, uh, you know, of my time or when I'm with my family or if I say, you know, hey, yeah, I really want to talk about this. You know, can I come visit you at your place of work tomorrow? Uh, maybe it's a business owner and they want to talk about something. Um, and then following up, making sure I do show up, you know, when I say I'm going to, uh, and then my, my kids also, my family is extremely supportive and my kids. So let's say we are, are at, you know, at a sporting event and my kids are tugging at me, but I'm talking with a resident. I want to be able to give that resident at least a few minutes of my time. So my kids understand that, you know, I, I just have to say to them, Hey, like, just give me a minute and I'll help you. So I think there is a little bit of balance there, but. I, I think we get by, we do it, we do it pretty good. I want to turn to our second segment now because I want to talk about the town of Bonneville in general. Before I ask this question, though, I want to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion at council. This is not a direction at council. We seem to get a lot of emails after this question is asked. Mayor, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue today as of recording that is facing the town of Bonneville? Uh, well, we've got, um, we've got a couple things going on. Uh, one of the biggest issues that my council has, you know, made a priority and, and I do feel that it's an issue as well is, um, and you know, I'm, I'm sure you get this a lot where, we're not unique from other, any other municipality. Lots of municipalities go through a lot of um, the same things that we do. We're working on rebranding. You know, we're not good at selling our, ourselves. We're not good at selling ourselves as a municipality, where, whether you're talking about attracting residents, tourism, investment. Um, so that that's one of the big things right now that um, we find that we're lacking. So, of course, we're going through rebranding. Um, you are the first got, mayor or councillor or Reeve who's come on this show and has said that this is, that is, uh, that is a unique thing that most people will uh, say attra attraction of residents and uh, retention of residents, but never someone to say, you know what? Yeah, it's our brand. We need to go through a rebranding process. That's a unique uh, statement there, yeah. mayor. 
Oh, well, thanks. Well, the last time it was done here was in 1992. And, uh, it's, it's, you know, we, we've grown a lot. Uh, so, and, and we know that we know we don't do a good job selling the town of Bonneville. And as I mentioned earlier, we're very much, um, we, we crutch on the oil industry. And so how do we sustain ourselves as, an, as a municipality when we're in a bus, you, you know, if we want to diversify or have more people here and, you know, we want people to be proud to live here. So I think that is one thing that, that we're working on when it comes to the rebranding, have that pride and want people to be here, even when it's in the bus times that um, people still want to stick around to the town of Bonneville. Um, and, and I guess that... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, what is this? What is the town and yourself as mayor helping to do to because you, you can make a motion, you can go through the process, but some like the branding isn't all that you need to do. You need to do other things yeah. as well. So what is yeah. the town doing to also alleviate some of these issues that rebranding while it's good, isn't going to fix every single issue that you have tomorrow? Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so the, the second thing, too, is um, our, our, I think one of the biggest things that we're up against is, I mean, I mentioned a few times, how do we diversify? How do we sustain ourselves in a municipality when we've got economic downturns and upturns? We know we're, we're hoping we're coming into an upturn with, uh, you know, the oil and gas and carbon capture in our we area. We all are. <laughs> Yeah. So how do we best prepare ourselves for that? Um, so we're, we're very, we're a council that's very progressive. We want to support our local businesses. How do we, and you know, we're looking at everything. How do we enhance our downtown? How do we work with other organizations to bring in new and exciting things to the town? So I think we're, we've got our hands in a lot of different um, pots to, you know, it's not just the rebranding. There's a lot of other things going on. You know, if we think about recreation, we have a hospital in town. So we know that the uh, health services is really important. We actually have our own municipally owned, along with our MD, the municipal district of, of Bonneville, we own our fire authority, EMS and 911. So how do we grow, grow that? How do we you know, make that better for patient care in our in our community. So these are all things that uh, that we're talking about and working on now. Now, I'm going to ask, go back. I'm going to do a throwback to a statement that you said, handling the different perspectives. You talked about that a little mm -hmm. bit earlier on in the interview. Now, you've talked about a lot of things there, economic development, branding, uh, EMS, growth, sustainability. Mm -hmm. But if I go to the town of Bonneville tomorrow and I go talk to a hundred of your residents and I ask them that exact same question, while they may talk about some of these macro issues, they're going to talk about some micro issues as well. They're going to talk about that park that needs to be fixed. They're going to need to talk about that pothole that's in front of their house, that sidewalk. Maybe they don't like some bylaws. How do you balance that? How do you balance the different perspectives and the different needs and wants of your community when it comes to growing your community in a sustainable way, but remembering that you have to retain the people that are there and you can't just brush people off? Yeah. Uh, well, a million I, I dollar question. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you need to have a solid plan in place. I think you need to have that vision. Uh, and you, you need to have that plan when it comes to the budget, right? Um, so that it's easy for somebody to say, yeah, at, at a micro level, you know what, I've been in this, this neighborhood forever and we need a park and we need it now. And, you know, I, I might get worked up and say, yeah, yeah, like I need to fight with this. But then I come back to my budget and I go, okay, we have a three-year budget that we're working on these sidewalks right now. We've got this part coming up, you know, maybe that's something we could budget later on. Um, I know it's probably not something, you know, people want to hear because they want to see action right away. Um, but it just, it just doesn't work that way. We've got so many priorities that we've got to take care of, but I think if you can come with it, with a, a clear vision and a clear plan, then people can buy into that. How much does the council that you currently serve with put into communications with its residents, because I can imagine having a plan is great, 
communicating that plan is another thing in its entirety because you can have a plan to the day you're blue, uh, you're in the ground, but at the end of the day, if no one knows about that plan, they're not going to buy into it. So how much communications do you and your council do on a regular basis to ensure that not only the residents are informed about the decisions, but they're informed about the plans that are in place to make sure that they aren't feeling left behind and their issue is being addressed, but it may not be in 2023, maybe 2024 or even 2025. Mm-hmm. Well, a few years ago, it was a priority, as I mentioned, as a municipality, we don't sell ourselves uh, well enough, but it was a priority that we don't communicate enough with our residents. So we worked um, really hard in the last few years to have a better website. We we have a municipal app now. Uh, you know, a lot of people are on social media, so having more presence there, um, which are all all great for getting that message out. But I think equally important, especially with this council, I'll tell you, it just excites me. People, they comment, you know, often how how much presence we do have in the community as a council. There's not an event or something going on in town where you will not see at least one or two of us there. We yeah. always ma- make sure that we have great representation around town. Um, we are where the people are so that people have access to us and we're all speaking with one voice. Uh, We all know the vision, we all know the plan, right? So so there's ample opportunity for residents to speak to, uh, you know, if it's not with myself, it's one of my counselors. So um, you're right, like it's easy to say, well, we have a vision, we have a plan, but it needs to be communicated. And I think we do a really good job with that being there uh, wherever the people are to be able to, uh, you know, clearly express <laughs> what our vision is. I want to ask this last sort of segment, but it's uh, still in segment two before we go into the tourism uh, segment. And I want to know from you, because you are the mayor and you have to look at the long-term plan of your uh, community. You, if I was to call you at the end of the year in, uh, in December of 2023 and say, hey, Elisa, what's up? Long time no talk. Remember us talking way back in March? Great to talk to you again. What was issue, what would issue X be that you and I could follow up on in December and you say, Chris, we got it done. We were able to get it done and it was able to make the town move forward a little bit. May not be gigantic, but for us, it's what we wanted to get done this year, and we got it done. What would issue X be for you to get done for the town of Bonneville in 2023? Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, which one do I want to go with? No. <laughs> is there is there many? Is there many things that you've put in the plan that you say, we need to get this done? To make our, be- our community better, we need to get one, two, and three done, or one, two, three, four, five, however many you want. What are the issues that you want to get accomplished by the end of 2023? And I know I'm putting you on the spot because I'm kind of basically putting you on record saying this is what we want to get done. But I've asked a lot of counselors and mayors this, and I'm surprised what they tell me. Okay. Okay. I'll give you two. And again, th- these are just, this is just my opinion. It's yeah. not um, an council. initiative from council or priority. I would like to see now I refer to our we it's called a regional fire authority where we have our uh, firefighters we have EMS and 911 they are all located in different buildings so we're working right now into moving into one central location uh, we have a vision there of building this industry um, you know that it's going to help to attract uh, more EMS staff. Uh, We know right now with the problems in the province with uh, ambulance shortages and EMS. So we're looking to build that um, under one roof and we've got a beautiful building. And so we're just in the works there. So I'd love to be by the end of the um, 2003 to say, hey, Chris, yeah, we we, we started building and we're we're moving in there. Um, The the second one is and this is. um, it's not necessarily new to the bon- town of Bonneville, but um, it's certainly, um, it's been, it's a lot more visible is we we have a lot more homeless people in the town of Bonneville, a lot of vulnerable population that's become a lot more visible. Um, and it, it's tough. It's really hard to see, especially on those cold nights. I'll go for a drive first thing in the morning and, you know, and, the, and I see where people are and 
trying to stay warm. Um, and so our, I know our local FCSS is working on, well, what, what are the, what are some of the reasons that, you know, the, these people maybe don't have a home or they don't have somewhere to go. And then hopefully by the end of this year, I'd love to have some, maybe a few action items in place on how we can best um, help uh, some of the vulnerable population in the town of Bonneville. The vulnerable population is a thing that I've been hearing a lot about lately, and a lot of municipalities are facing this issue. You are not alone in this. Is Are you looking to the province? Are you looking to the federal government? Are you looking to your surrounding to communities, your surrounding communities, whether it be the MD or some other cities and towns, to get together and try to solve this uh houselessness issue or are you are you in it alone i'm not trying to i'm not trying to put you on the spot here but i'm mm -hmm. hearing horror stories that a lot of towns and municipalities are in it by themselves and they have to try and solve this issue for themselves are you uh I, i'm happy to report that we're, we're not alone we very much work as a region uh the city of cold lake which is just about 50 kilometers east of us uh, they they just started um they opened a homeless shelter so we're learning from them we're in discussions with them on you know how did they get that point uh how how can we get there also many of the organizations in the town of bonneville banded together to we've got money from the province to do a study um you know, I, I hate saying that we got to do a study, but we have we need to have some context and understand what the actual situation is so that we can best help. Um, because I'm assuming if you just went and spent a swath of money, your residents will be going, where's the plan? And that's what a report right. study does. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're right. So we, we've got um, a really strong friendship center. Uh, we've got all the you know, the FCSS is behind us. We've got quite a few different organizations and they may meet often. Uh, AHS is at the table. So I uh, know I don't feel like we're alone. I feel like we're very much working with other municipalities and organizations on how to best go forward. I want to turn to our last segment because I am cautious of time here, but I know you are a busy woman as well. And I want to go into tourism because I love tourism. I love spending my hard-earned dollars in Canada at these municipalities. If you come on my show, I will be in my your community spending my hard-earned economic development dollars in your community. So, <laughs> Mayor, I want to ask this question because as a tourist, as someone who has listeners from around the world and around Canada... What are the hidden gems of your community that people need to stop in and see? Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Let's, now I'm, I'm asking the branding questions. Let's see how well you can right? sell your town. Yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for me, the town of Bonneville, we have a lake that's, um, it's a very small lake. Uh, you cannot have motorized uh, boats or anything motorized on it. Uh, at one point, it was um, it's very good for uh, bird watching, and uh, so we have a really beautiful path on the one side of the lake, on the north side, which is within the town of Bonneville, with with a really beautiful green. Um, I call it our green belt. It's very it's very long actually. It's about two and a half uh, kilometers long, where we've got multiple splash park, we've got workout equipment, we've got parks, and just last year we connected our path with the the path that goes out to a larger lake out into the MD or some people might call it a county, right? And so now you could ride your bike, take 45 minutes, you can get out to the lake where there's a beach, uh, they've got a pier and all sorts of things there. So for me, that is a, a gem here in the town of Bonneville. Also in the winter, we just put uh, Christmas lights up on all the trees that um, go along the path. So you can also use it uh, during the winter. Um, you know, we've got a great museum. We've got a rec facility. You've sold me now. I heard, I heard museum. <laughs> I'm coming. No matter what. I'm coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. If you love history, we've got a really great museum. We actually in the town of Bonneville are celebrating our 75th birthday here and coming up in a couple weeks. So we've got deep roots. We've got long history and it's it's showcased really well at our museum. I may just have to come yeah. up for the 75th uh, birthday then. Um, Please do. What about yourself, though? After a stressful day at council, after a long day, where do you go to decompress in the community? And I say in the community because every councillor, mayor, 
always wants to say their house and their room, but you can't. Where in the community okay. do you go? Is there a park? Is there a local watering hole that you go to? Where, where do you go to decompress? Gosh, where do I go? You know, um, I, I would, you know, apart from going over to a really great friend's house, <laughs> you know, might, might go out to Mr. Mike's and um, have a great supper and a glass of wine. I also like to support our local uh, gym gyms. So I'll go to a gym class with a friend. We've got some really great uh, a spin. Um, they're called Wheel Fit Co. I love to go there. Uh, we've also got another gym called the Underground Bar. Great community. And it's just, you know, when when people are going and you're, you're working out, you're getting all that stress out, but you're also getting all those endorphins and it's always an uplifting place. So, I, you know what, if I've got some spare time and I can go to one of my gyms, then that's where I'm going to go. I want to ask my final question because I am I'm so appreciative of the time that you've been able to take out of your busy schedule to do this. And take as long as you want to answer this question, because it's the most important question after this uh, 40 minutes of conversation. In your opinion, what makes the town of Bonneville such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Oh, my gosh. Loaded question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think there's so many things. I think, you know, um, if it, it's very much a generational family, uh, family, uh, community, you know, so I think there are deep roots in that sense. There's deep pride in the community. So it's very welcoming. Even if you're a newcomer, I think you'll get, you know, you'll just get embraced by the community because we're so, uh, appreciative of those that came before us and built the town of Bonneville. And I think that really shows even going into the new generations and the next generations. If we think of some of the, we've got a, a high density of Ukrainians in our community. So we've had many people come from Ukraine in the last um, you know, year and the community has just shown up. They embrace them, you know, any event we're inviting them, we want them to come out. And so it's very, very welcoming We've got a great sense of uh, volunteer people, you know, come in if there's something that needs to be done, if there's money to be raised, if there's an event going on, uh, you know, people come out and they, you know, the the volunteerism is, is really strong. But we also have, we're very bold. We're very, you know, we like to take risks and, uh, with, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit. If you want to start a business here, uh, you know, there's so many supports here. There's many, many businesses that have started here, stayed here, have been longstanding businesses here. So I think if, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to take a risk, uh, Bonneville is here for you too. Elisa, I want to thank you so much. A, for sitting down and talking about yourself, because I know sometimes there's a, a pressure to always talk about your community, but talking about yourself, talking about your community. In our last 40-minute conversation, I can say with all honesty, the town of Bonneville is lucky to have you as their mayor. The town of Bonneville is lucky to have you at the council table. And I appreciate people like yourself taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and talk about local municipal politics, but also community. So thank you. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe it's been 40 minutes. I appreciate the conversation. This has been so much fun. And yes, please do come visit us and let me know when you come down. I'd love to take some time and visit with you. For sure. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It will help you. It will help your community and it'll help us be a better people. So with that, this has been the Crossboard Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, just keep talking.